City breaks over the years have become one of the most popular forms of holidaying due to the fact that they present the perfect blend of culture, excitement, history, shopping and relaxation. However, most cities around the world will heavily favour one element over another and it's often difficult to find a city that truly has a little of everything on offer until, that is, you set foot in Dublin, the capital of Ireland. This remarkable compact city has everything the intrepid urban explorer could possibly desire and probably a great deal more besides. At first glance today Dublin is a lively cosmopolitan city with a welcoming atmosphere and wonderful hospitality. But this wasn't always the case and down through the ages bitter battles and bloody wars have been fought on Dublin streets and you don't have to look too far to find evidence of the carnage. Founded on the banks of the River Liffey, Dublin first began to really take shape from when Viking invaders started a settlement here in the 9th century. As time moved on, further invasions, most notably by Ireland's near neighbours on mainland Britain, signalled further conflict eventually resulting in the Anglo-Norman seizing control of Dublin. Matters were made considerably worse during the reign of Henry VIII, when England broke away from the Catholic Church in favour of the Protestant movement, and religion became a major issue in the conflict between the English forces in occupation and the native Irish. The battle for Irish independence continued well into the 20th century, with Dublin always at the heart of any dispute. But far from lying in ruins, the city has grown strong from its trials and tribulations, rising phoenix-like from the ashes on so many occasions. Consequently, deciding where to start any tour of Dublin can be a difficult choice. But as the story of this great city will unfold as we travel around, there's probably no better place to begin than at the National Museum. It was originally built in the 1880s to the design of Sir Thomas Dean, and this wonderful, classically designed Victorian building is a joy to visit both inside and out. Within these walls, visitors are able to follow the story of Dublin from its Viking beginnings right through to the present day, and the surroundings are spectacular. The most impressive feature has to be the wonderful domed rotunda that sits on top of the museum like a fine crown. In fact, the design of this part of the building was actually borrowed from the Altus Museum in Berlin, created some 50 years earlier but is far from being just a replica, as this museum is one of the finest examples of Victorian architecture you'll find anywhere. In fact, it would be perfectly feasible to spend this entire program viewing both the architecture and contents of this truly fascinating museum, but there's a great deal more to see, and you only have to step outside to reach our next destination. One glance at Ireland's National Library will tell you that it's also the work of Sir Thomas Dean, looking very similar to the National Museum, and you could quite easily get them confused with their matching pillared fronts and a wonderful domed rotunda. Of course, as soon as you 